What's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm going to show you how to create this field of grass just kind of blowing in the wind in this nice kind of organic way. This kind of just kind of flutters across and rolls across these hills. But it just kind of creates this really nice flowing grass field very quickly and easily. It's kind of very Shire-esque or Breath of the Wild sound of music type vibes. It's just really relaxing and it's kind of really fun to make and really easy to make. So let's go ahead and get into that and real quick just to make sure it really means a lot when you guys um, subscribe and like my videos as well as ring that bell for more training to make sure you're notified when that comes out. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been crazy supportive over the last few weeks, especially with all this new content that I've been pumping out. Thank you all so much for everything and all your support. It really means a whole lot. Thank you again. All right, let's get into it. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG Shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. To get started, let's go ahead and uh, grab this cube here, click and hold, and go to Landscape. We're going to use our Landscape here for our plane, and we're just going to make this a little bit bigger. We're going to add a zero here, make this 6,000 by 6,000. And then for our height, we're gonna do about 270. And this is all just kind of just to kind of create those rolling hills. So you can play around with the values here and make it your own. For the segments, we're gonna leave those how they are. For the rough furrows, we're gonna turn that down and that's just gonna give us more of these smoother hills. And we can turn our fine furrows up a bit more, somewhere around 70-ish. And then for our sea level, we're gonna take this up to about 50% and that's just gonna give us few more rolling hills and we can bring this fine furrow back down a bit there at about maybe 60 six ish so yeah so now we just have some rolling hills and you can play with the seeds and things to get different looks that you want so now what we want to do is we want to create hair for this and so we're going to use hair to create the grass so we're going to go to simulate hair objects add hair and with that landscape selected it's going to go ahead and add that hair onto our landscape for us but if for some reason your hair doesn't add onto your landscape and you don't see it, make sure you go into your hair tab and underneath the guides tab here, we want to make sure that you have your landscape object inside of your link here. And that's going to say, I want to grow the hair on this object. We're going to leave the count at 10,000. This is going to be based on the amount of segments and stuff. So right now that's totally fine for the number of roots and the length 100 is totally fine as well. And we can use eight for the segments as well, because this is just going to be based on our guides. This isn't actually the hair per se so the hair and the guides are different and the guides are kind of just a rough visual view of sort of about where your hairs are going to be so each one of these doesn't represent a hair this is a guide so what we want to do is we want to go into the hair tab here and we want to increase the count here we're just going to go to the beginning of this and add a one so we have 150,000, which sounds like a whole lot but it's really not a ton when it comes to hairs so we're actually going to do just 150,000 and we're going to increase the segments of this up to 20. And basically we're going to use dynamics with this. So our hair is going to be bending and stuff and we're going to have frizz and kink in our hair. And if you don't have enough segments, you can get some really sharp, hard angles if you don't have enough segments. So we're going to do 20 instead of 12, but you don't want to go crazy and have a ton of segments in this because the more segments you have, the longer dynamics and stuff will take to render. Next thing we're going to do, and real quick, just to explain kind of how this works, let's render this out. So you can see we have a lot more hair here than we have splines. And so this is looking pretty good, but you can obviously see through to the ground really easily. And obviously this is partly because our hair is shooting straight up. And when we start bending this, it's gonna kind of, uh, you know, fill that in a little bit. But one thing we can do to fill this in even more is use cloning. And so down here underneath the cloning tab, we're gonna twirl that down and we're gonna set this to one. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to set the root of this to 50 and the tip to 20 and then the variation to 20 as well. So the way this is going to work is we're gonna hit render on this and you'll see the difference. Basically cloning says I want to take an instance of this hair and just create a exact copy of it and an instance of it about somewhere randomly between 50 centimeters from its origin point and 20 centimeters from the tip point and add a little variation in there. So we're gonna create this clone. We're gonna create extra hair without having to increase the hair count, which is just gonna save us uh, render time and calculations and stuff. So you can't just have like 500 hairs and then clone it a whole bunch because you're gonna start seeing that pattern and how those are the same. But you can see here now that that's calculated, it's just kind of offset 
those hair roots. So this is like way thicker looking and way more full. And we didn't increase the count of hairs at all. We're just using cloning to kind of create a fuller look without actually adding any more hairs to be calculated. We're just creating an instance of it. So kind of a neat way to create a thicker, fuller field of hair without having to add more hair, which is going to keep your render time down and your simulation uh, a little simpler and stuff like that. Now we actually need to go into our hair material by double clicking our hair material here. We wanna make sure we have these tabs here. We can see this little window here in our attribute panel. We want to go to basic and we want to add kink. We want to add a frizz. We want to add length. So enable all of those together. And you can see how that changes the look of our hair, but though we don't see it here at all. Now, we're, the good thing with Redshift is that it uses the attributes of this hair material, even though this isn't going to be the material we're going to use to color our scene and stuff like that. So if you're using Cinema 4D or Physical, you will go in and color, use the color in the specular here to render out the color of your grass. But for Redshift, we're going to use the Redshift material. But we're going to leave this here because all of these attributes do apply to the hair. So what we want to do is we want to go into our thickness tab. And this is the first thing we're going to change. We're going to change the root of this to five and leave the tip at 0.1. And then we're going to grab this curve here and pull that down. And for our variation, we're going to say one as well. So what this is going to do is this is going to make the base of our hair uh, five centimeters wide and it's going to fade up slowly and smoothly up to a 0.1 tip and there's going to be a little variation throughout our hair so not every one is going to be exactly as thick but that's going to create blades of grass versus individual tiny little splines for hair if we look at this on our render you can see our field looks a lot more fuller and thicker and that's because of the kink and the frizz and also because you can see here in our roots We've got sort of a thick base and a thin top, so we kind of have this more nice blade of grass looking. And you can see how some of these are offset and hanging off the edge. That's because our cloner is offset randomly, which is totally fine. So that's what's scattering that out, and that's just going to be off screen, so that's not going to be an issue at all. The next thing we want to do is we want to go into our length tab, and we want to go ahead and turn the variation up to 50% and the amount up to 50% as well. So this is going to say I want half of the grass to be half as long as the rest of the grass just to kind of give it a more organic look because all of our grass isn't going to be the exact same length. So, and then the frizz and kink, the settings by default are totally fine, but you can feel free to play around with these as well to get different looks. The next thing we need to do is go back into our hair object. And we want to go into the dynamics here. And the way this works is if we go back to frame zero, we hit play, you're going to see that all of our hair just kind of falls over, kind of pitiful and sad like that. And that's totally fine. That's, you know, normal for the default hair setting. And that's just having gravity just pull our hair down. So what we want to do is we're going to go into dynamics and we're going to go underneath properties and twirl that down. And this is where we're going to mess with some things. And these settings are going to also affect how the wind affects our hair and how our hair reacts. And so what we want is we don't want this, this kind of limp like grass to just fall over. We want it to kind of have this natural stiffness to it. But we look at this and our stiffness is already at 100%. And that's fine. This is kind of a, I don't feel like this is labeled the right thing because rest hold should really be called stiffness because rest hold is like how it's going to react when there's nothing being applied to it. So what we want to do is we want to go in here and we want to increase this rest hold to 20%. And if we hit play now, you'll see it still kind of falls, but it doesn't fall over as far as it did before. And the other thing we want to go ahead and turn up our drag to 10% and our rest mix up to 10% as well. And so this is just going to allow our hair to be affected by the wind, have some ability to fall over but also just have kind of a little bit of springiness to come back to its original state. So if we look at this, you're gonna see it's still going to collapse over, but if we look at it up close, we're realizing it doesn't actually fall all the way to the ground. It just falls over a little bit and then kind of sits back up. So it still has this nice kind of stiffness to it where it's still standing up. It's not falling over completely, which is exactly what we want. To add wind to our scene, we go to simulate, forces, wind. So that creates our little hair icon here, which is our little fan blade here. And what we want to do is we want to grab this 
and just pull this back off screen a bit and it's going to blow out along the Z axis here by default. So what we want to do is we want to just go ahead and change the mode to force instead of acceleration. And if we hit play now, we'll see that it's kind of blowing our grass a little bit, but it's not super strong, but it's just kind of blowing everything over and everything is just kind of evenly falling over in one way. And we don't really like that very much. What we want to do is we want to increase the speed up to 50. So now we hit play. See, that's really, really blowing our hair over and it's kind of just constantly blowing our hair, but we're not getting any of that nice organic look where the it's kind of sort of blowing in some places and rolling across our field. It's just kind of constantly pushing our hair over so it just looks like it's combed, which isn't what we want. So we want to add turbulence to this. So we're going to add 50% turbulence to this and the frequency, we're going to add 32%. So now that we've added that turbulence and we hit play, you'll see we have these nice kind of organic patches here. If you look at it from above, you can really see how some patches it's blowing and the other patches it's not. That's just giving it these little pockets of wind across an organic moving way that allow that grass to have a little bit of rest to snap back to where it is so it's not constantly being blown by a constant force of wind because wind doesn't blow like a leaf blower or something like that where it's just constant speed, constant velocity across the whole place evenly. So that's just gonna help create that more organic look. Very nice. So now that we have our wind set up how we want it, what we need to do is go back into our hair object, go to our cache, and we definitely want to click this dynamics cache and hit calculate. And what that's going to do is that's going to bake that for us so we don't have to run the simulation every time. So we can actually have like normal playback speeds in our viewport here. And we can also scrub through our timeline without having to re-sim it every time. So now we have this nice scrubbable timeline of this field of grass blowing in the wind. So there you go, that's all that is to it. And you can play around with the wind settings, the different hair settings and stuff as well. But that pretty much is how you create a nice field of grass blowing in the wind. And then we'll go ahead and cover how to just texture this real quick with Redshift. And that, but that's really it. So for this, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and hit plus because we're going to use an RS material and not an RS standard material, actually. The RS material has a feature that the standard material doesn't that's actually really awesome and perfect for grass. And that's this backlight translucency option. So what we want to do is we want to diffuse. We want this to be kind of a nice green. And then for our backlight, we want it to be kind of that nice green, but add a little bit more yellow into it because, you know, grass kind of has that yellow look as it comes through. So basically the way this is going to work is like if light passes into our object and is backlit, it's going to be more of this yellow color versus more of this green color. So we're going to increase the weight of this. And just to have an idea of what this looks like, let's go ahead and just add a dome light real quick. And we can just use an HDRI from HDRI Haven. And so with our dome light here in our scene, we have our grass with just the diffuse on and not the backlight. And it doesn't look like we really have enough light in our scene or anything, but we really should. And it's just kind of because our grass is just kind of bland and grass isn't totally solid. It's a little translucent. So as we bring this up to around 0.7, we're going to get a lot nicer effect here. So now we kind of can bring this down a bit, 0.6 just maybe. We can play around with that and we can kind of see how that light is just going to come through our grass. So we're going to still get these pockets of darker grass here where it's you know, the roots are darker than the tips because this light is coming through the tips easier. So we have just kind of a nicer looking grass here. You can play around with the colors and stuff and create your own looks and play around the translucency to get the amount that you want. But basically you want your grass to be a little bit of see-through uh, to let that light kind of shine through your grass a little bit there. So we'll bring this up above 0.5. And for the reflection, what I did here is I created a max on noise. So I clicked this little dot, typed in noise, went to texture and max on noise. Instead of that, I changed the noise to turbulence and I changed the white color down to sort of a dark gray. Not completely dark gray, but we just wanted to add some roughness to our reflection so it wasn't super shiny across the whole surface. Uh, inside the output, we can bring that low clip up a bit just to add a little bit more of that gray and then up the scale a little bit as well. And all these are just kind of arbitrary. This is just kind of to create more of an organic sheen across our grass rather than just an even coating across our whole grass. And then for the IOR, I changed that to 1.7 to make it a little bit more shiny. You also can play with the roughness of the diffuse. Bringing that up a bit might add a little bit more 
kind of a nice grassy look to your scene as well. Then for the ground, I just used a standard redshift material, made it sort of a you know a green, dark green, brought that roughness all the way up, threw that on the landscape just to kind of fill that in. But there you go, and then you just kind of add a different, I built a plane real quick with a cloud image on it for the background back here, or you could render this out with an alpha channel, which is already built in, so you can use a PNG and it with the transparency, and add in your own background cloud sky image there as well if you wanted to. But pretty much that's the basics of it and how to create that nice blowing grass field. Hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for more cool training. Thank you guys so much for all the support, especially over the last few weeks. Again, thank you again. See you next time.